Hello and welcome back to Educator.com and welcome back to Biochemistry. So at the close of the last lesson, we talked about the levels of protein structure. We had primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So today we're going to talk about the primary structure, the amino acid sequence. We want to know what is the sequence of amino acids, which is next to which, which amino acid is next to which, and how are they arranged in a linear fashion. So that's what we're going to be working on. Let's get started. Okay, so the amino acid sequence, the amino acid sequence determines how the peptide is going to actually fold. How the peptide will fold. And thus, ultimately determines its structure. So as you can see, the primary sequence um, of a protein, of a peptide, is very, very important because depending on what amino acids are where, it's going to basically guide how the protein is going to assume its three-dimensional shape. And it's that three-dimensional shape which is going to determine its function, its structure and function. So let me write these words a little bit better. So the amino acid sequence determines how the peptide will fold and thus ultimately determines its structure and function. So amino acid sequence implies the function and that's what's important in a protein. What does it do? Okay, well there are many techniques for elucidating amino acid sequence. We will discuss a chemical method. We will discuss a chemical method. still used in laboratories. It is called the Edmund degradation. The Edmund degradation. Excuse me. Basically what the Edmund degradation does is it labels and removes the N-terminal amino acid for identification. It labels it for identification, it removes it so that it can be separated and that way you can identify it. The remaining peptide, the remaining peptide now has It has a new N-terminal amino acid. And now what we do is we just repeat the process. So that's it. Excuse me. We're basically taking an amino acid and we're labeling the end, cutting it off, identifying it. Next one, labeling the end, cutting it off, identifying it. And we just go down the list. We're just chopping it up until we finally get to the last amino acid. That's all the Edmund degradation does. And of course, this is an automated procedure because we have really, really good chemical control. So we can just put our sample into a machine and it'll do everything for us and it'll give us a readout at the end. It's really quite wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to do a, um, a schematic representation of the Edmund degradation uh, describing each step. And then we'll go ahead and do an example of an Edmund degradation with a specific, um, with a specific amino acid. Okay. Uh, I wonder if I should start on a new, yeah, let me go ahead and start on a new page here. So, yeah, that's fine. 
So this is going to be the Edmund degradation. Let me go ahead and do this in blue. Okay, so I have to warn you, there is going to be a lot of chemical names being thrown around, and there's going to be a lot of chemical structures being thrown around. So this is where you have to be really, really, really careful, and that includes me. So please, by all means, you definitely want to confirm this because uh, confirm that I'm actually drawing the right structures. Um, I would definitely encourage you to take a look at the Edmund degradation uh, procedure in your book to see what they have to say uh, about the particular mechanism and how they draw it. Really, really important. But again, ultimately, it's not just about passive learning. You don't just want to look at a diagram and say, I understand it. You need to be able to reproduce it. That's when you actually understand it. Okay, so the Edmund degradation. So let's start off with a just a generic peptide. So we have um, H3NCC, and I'm just going to go ahead and write peptide for the other, because again, we're just going to be concerned with the N terminal, the one on the left. So we have the carbonyl carbon there, and we have our R group attached to the alpha carbon, and this is a plus. So the first step is. Uh, where should I write this? Oh, I'll go ahead and write it here. I um, wonder if I should do it in... This one I'm going to do in black, I think. So, well, I'm going to... Boom. Okay, going to be drawing this thing. N, double bond C, double bond S. Okay, so what we do is we take this peptide and we react it with something called phenyl isothiocyanate under mildly alkaline conditions. Okay, so that's the first step. So let me go ahead and write this as one. I'm going to write the products below instead of to the right. I'm going to write the steps over here. I just wanted to do it in a schematic way. So phenyl isothio... You know what? I need a little bit more room to write this out. So one phenyl isothiocyanate. That is this molecule right here. Okay, it's abbreviated PITC. Phenyl isothiocyanate under mild basic conditions, alkaline conditions. There we go. Under mild OH. This is the Edmund reagent. So you'll often hear it. They might say PITC, or they'll just say use Edmund reagent. So this is our Edmund reagent. Let me go ahead and put that there. This is called the Edmund reagent. Let me go back to black. OK, so when this reaction actually takes place, what you end up with is this product. Uh, let me see, it's going to be uh, this here. Let's go ahead and put the H on there. It's going to be C double bonded S. And it's going to be attached to the N, C, C. Uh, this is carbonyl. This is our peptide. Uh, this is our R group, and we have our H. Okay, so the bond that is formed, the bond is formed between this carbon and that nitrogen. This is the bond that's formed right there. Okay. Now again, let's keep track of our um, let's keep track of our peptide. Our peptide is right here, NCC. That's what you want to look for when you're doing these yourself. Again keep track of your peptide, and you can keep track of it by looking for that NCC motif. N to the left, C to the right, C to the right. Carbonyl on the second C. R group on the first C, counting from left to right. So here is our peptide. I'm sorry, here is our amino acid. This is the one that we're actually pulling off. This is the isothiocyanate part here. So what I've actually ended up forming here is something called phenyl thio carbamoyl. That refers to this particular arrangement of atoms. 
um, phenyl is this, thio is the sulfur, carbamoyl is this carbon attached to a nitrogen and a nitrogen here. So what I've done is I've taken this peptide that I have and I've created a phenylthiocarbamoyl derivative of it by just attaching, by reacting it with the phenyl isothiocyanate, the PITC. So this phenyl thiocarbamoyl, they call it PTC. Okay, so now we'll go to our second step. Now I'll go ahead and do another black here. Okay, this one, we are going to react it with CCOOH. And this is going to be anhydrous. So what we're going to do is we're going to react this PTC with anhydrous trifluoroacetic acid. Anhydrous trifluoroacetic acid. It's just an it's just a weak acid that happens to be a little bit stronger than acetic acid. Um, actually, any acid will do, it's fine. It just needs to be anhydrous. Now what happens when this reaction takes place is the following. What you end up with is the following two molecules. This is the one that actually breaks the bond that we're trying to break. Okay, and I'll tell you which bond in just a minute once I draw it out. So let me see. Um, that's fine, I guess I can fit it in here. Let me go back to blue. So we have our C, we have our NH, and we have our uh, phenyl group, C. And then we have our, here is our N, here is our C, and here is our C. That is our, that, and then we have our S and C, and we have R1, let me make sure I have everything on here, N trivalent, S, okay, everything is good, yes, and of course we have that plus our new peptide, three peptide, the new amino terminus. So the bond that we have actually broken is the following. We've broken this bond. Let me do this in black. We have broken this bond. And again, I'm going to go through the mechanism in just a little bit, but I just wanted you to see chemically what happens. So this thing, when we form this species, or again, let me see, NCC, keep track of the NCC. This is our amino acid, okay? This is our that, this is our that. That's what this is. We wanna keep track of our amino acids. This is called, in case you wanna know, it's called an analino thiazolinone. Analino refers to the phenyl group attached to nitrogen. Thiazolinone happens to be this thing, the C, the N, the S arranged in a ring. Okay. Now we take the third step. Oops, this is not number, this is two, not number one. Number one was that. Sorry about that. This is step two of the Edmund degradation. Now we're going to go to step three of the Edmund degradation. So let me move on to the uh, next page.